In this video, we will explore different prompt engineering techniques and experiment with them in code. And in order to do this, we need a motivating use case. Remember, what we're trying to build in this course is an LLM powered application and will specifically work towards a, some, an, an application like uh, Weights and Biases OneBot, the application that allows um, Weights and Biases users to ask different questions and get responses on how to get stuff done with Weights and Biases. And in order to, to build this application, um, one thing that we will need in the future is a set of questions and answers. That's something that might be helpful, for example, when we are evaluating uh, different prompt engineering techniques uh, of um, and, and different design choices in our application. So in this video, we're going to generate a synthetic data set of weights and biases user questions. Let's dive in. Again, we will use a Jupyter Notebook because we want to interactively experiment with the APIs. Uh, we need uh, to install uh, the libraries if we haven't done this before, import them and have our uh, OpenAI API key configured. Uh, we'll also keep logging uh, the results of our experimentation into weights and biases with the autolog function. One new thing that we will introduce in this notebook is completion with backoff. As you've seen, uh, OpenAI uh, API is very popular. Uh, we can sometimes get this rate limiting error, uh, which uh, we'd like to handle more gracefully. And for that reason, we will add this Retri decorator. And whenever we, uh, we hit one of these uh, limits, uh, the uh, function will wait, and then we'll try to uh, make that uh, request again. So that should make uh, the experience of uh, working uh, with this uh, notebook a bit easier. So let's um, run this cell. Let's uh, start with GPT 3.5 turbo model here, but we'll switch ultimately into GPT-4. Um, and because we're using a chat model, we need uh, our prompt to be, uh, to be done in two parts. Uh, the first part is the system prompt, and this is the part that should determine the behavior, the qualities uh, of the LLM. Uh, it, it, it becomes uh, the persona that it tries to follow as it tries to answer our question. And then the user prompt actually like, defines like, what we ask uh, the language model to do. In this case, we'll keep the system prompt very uh, limited and we'll, um, we'll generate a very, like we'll put a very simple prompt, which is to generate a support question from a weights and biases user. So if you go back to prompt engineering techniques, this is a zero shot prompting. We're not giving the model any examples. We're not giving it any context. We're just asking it to do some work, generate a support question. And we'll fit that uh, into the, the chat API uh, with backoff uh, because we want to be prepared for the, uh, the rate limiting errors. And uh, we'll generate a bunch of responses. We can actually ask the model to generate several responses. And doing this through the API is um, better than simply repeating this call several times because it reduces the cost of generating these responses. And then we'll display them and print them, this time using Markdown, so it's a bit easier to read in a notebook. So let's run this and see uh, what comes out. Okay, we can see uh, this one pretty quickly. Uh, we get a bunch of questions. How do I track the performance of different models over time on weights and biases? How do I connect and monitor my machine learning experiments in weights and biases? How do I save my project to a specific directory in weights and biases and so on. And we can see um, these are pretty good, but these are also very generic questions. And I'm not sure if they are actually similar to what real users are asking. That's something that we can uh, evaluate later on. Um, but uh, the next step that we can do from uh, beyond zero shot is to give the model several examples. And this is uh, the few shot example in this case. So how do we do it? First, uh, we collected several uh, user questions from our Discord server, and we put this into examples uh, text file, which is uh, tab uh, delimited. So we can now read uh, these examples and we can display a sample question. So this is a real 
a question one of two, uh, like a little bit above 200 real queries. What are the risks um, of supplying proprietary data into a third party cloud provider such as weights and biases? Uh, interesting question, not something that I would expect, but it reflects uh, the, the distribution uh, of, of user questions in the real world. So I think maybe this will help uh, the model to, to generate, like to create more diverse examples. So for the few shot prompt, uh, we will uh, add a random choice of real questions into the prompt and we will share that as examples of real user queries. And again, we'll ask the model to use this and to generate um, several examples. This is again, the printed version of the prompt that we're fitting into the model now. We're giving it real examples from our list and let's run the model and see what uh, it comes up with. Okay, we can now see uh, the questions that the model generated. Uh, the first one is quite similar to the previous ones. Uh, then it asks, how do I visualize the distribution of a specific column in my weights and biases table using histograms and density plots? I think this one is a bit more specific, might have been inspired by one of the few shared examples. And there's this artifact here, which I actually would like to avoid. Uh, the model responds with, sure, here's a support question based on these examples. That's something I would should probably put into the prompt that I'd like to avoid. Just give me the question, don't give me extra text. Uh, and again, I think this these questions are a bit more diverse. I think these few short um, examples are helping, but we can we can go even further. And um, to go further and to increase the range of questions that we can ask the model, uh, we may uh, want to give it some more context. And um, the type of questions that we actually want to be, like, should be able to respond are the type of questions where we also have some documentation available. As long as there is the documentation for a specific user question, we should be able to answer that question. So in order to, to evaluate our model, we especially want to make sure that whenever documentation is available, the answer is correct for that question. So why don't we use documentation to also generate synthetic questions? And to do this, uh, we provided in our um, in our course repo, we provided just several examples of weights and biases docs. We don't um, we don't um, provide the entire docs. They are available at docs uh, .1db uh, .ai. Uh, However, um, going through all of these documents would uh, take a lot of time and a lot of uh, API calls. So we just uh, we'll just use a small sample of that. Um, what you need to uh, understand as you're using just a small sample of, of docs, then this data set of questions um, will also be limited to what is available in these docs. So first let's process our directory and uh, collect all of the markdown, markdown files. And we can see there are 11 documents uh, in, this, in this folder. Uh, then um, we want to fit these documents into the prompt, into the context window of our model. Uh, so let's check how long these documents are. And we're interested in the number of tokens. We will use the tick token library to calculate the number of tokens per document. And we can see that some of them are actually quite long. We don't need that much text in our prompt. Um, and for those uh, documents, we will um, just extract a random chunk of a document to, um, uh, to, to, to inspire the model to create some questions. So let's also define this uh, random chunking function. And now uh, we will generate a context prompt where um, we ask the model to generate a support question from a weights and biases user and we give a, a context of a, a fragment of weights and biases documentation and we tell the model that this question should be answerable by the provided fragment of weights and biases documentation. So let's um, do this, let's see this uh, prompt. So in our case, um, the model picked randomly um, Let's see, I think a fragment of code from one of our integrations. Let's see if we can see which integration this is. No, I think it might be just a simple standard example um, of um, weights and biases. And then it talks also about defining metric. It's probably from the intro 
uh, call up. Okay, let's see uh, let's see what uh, what this uh, prompt results uh, in and what type of generations it can it can trigger. Let's uh, give the model a couple of seconds and then see the outputs. Okay, so uh, the model asked the following questions: What is the purpose of the defined metric function in weights and biases? How can it be used to control the display of summary metrics? Um, what is the purpose of get Brett's loss accuracy function in this weights and biases documentation fragment? That's not something we're looking for. This uh, definitely looks like a synthetic question where, um, let's call it the, the model or the user has seen documentation and then asks questions about it. We are actually interested in natural questions, in questions that a user might have without seeing the documentation. However, we do want to make sure that documentation can answer it. So probably we have not done a good job with the prompt. So how do we, how do we do a better job on the prompt side?